Kitty. Where are we? It's me. I'm over here. Hello. Happy Tuesday. I'm Mike. I am the director of technology for thegymnasium.com. Turn my tunes down a bit here. Uh, I get online every Tuesday on Twitch for about an hour and a half to stream um, some of my job for you, to show you what it's like to be me as I work, as I do my things, um, to demonstrate uh, some of the things we do at Gymnasium, some of the goodness that we provide in our courses, and sort of just the philosophy that we have of being open-ended, open-minded, and um, being, being real with our users and our students. Um, if you don't know the Gymnasium, the gymnasium.com, this here website, uh, offers free online courses on design and development of web technologies, on time management and copywriting and user experience and visual design, graphic design and uh, coding for designers, modern web design, JavaScript jQuery style guide. We have, or, sorry, survival guide. We have loads and loads of really cool courses that you should take. They are all 100% free. They are all self-paced video courses. You can do it if you can understand me talking. The courses are better than me. Uh, they're taught by some amazing instructors from the uh, from across the, the globe, really, people who are practicing what they teach uh, day to day, so we don't just hire bags of air to teach you about things they've read about. We hire real people to uh, write real courses and work on real courses for you that are things that they do for their job. So you should check it out. Um, today on stream, I'm going to be picking up where I left off, where I left off last week. Um, in working on some uh, enhancements to our site uh, via a job module that we're putting together for Gymnasium. Um, where I left off on stream last week is more or less where I'll pick up today. Um, we had uh, written a node application. Let me see if I can get my windowing right here. Uh, yeah, maybe not. Let's try that. Yeah, good enough. We wrote a node application um, last week to test out some, where is it, there we go, to test out some um, logic around pulling job, uh, job modules, job listings, sorry, from an API that we use at Gymnasium, uh, to then take them from said API and put them into a parsable format that we can use on our site. So let's take a look at what we did last week. I'll do a quick quick rundown review of what we had done, uh, and then I'll go into what's next. Um, where's the best place to start? So it's a node project, which means that it has a package.json, which describes the project. Um, most of the stuff, description, name, version, author, license, uh, are all just, just metadata, somewhat irrelevant. Um, we have two scripts that are run within this file. The start script just runs index.js, which is this guy here. Uh, the lint script runs ESLint on the whole batch of things in here. Uh, we had also installed Prettier, which automatically formats my code upon saving, um, which I may or may not be completely sold on, but I'll suffer through it for the purpose of this project at least. Um, there's a number of dependencies loaded that have to do with running ESLint. Uh, these are dev dependencies, so these wouldn't actually be exported to a production environment. Um, as well as Jest for testing, prettier for co prettier for code formatting, like we talked about, and then on the server side of things, or sorry, on the dependency side of things, not necessarily server side, we have Lodash, which I'm using for uh, logical grouping of of uh, some of the JSON objects we're dealing with. So Lodash provides a boatload of helper functions to iterate over. Um, JSON objects um, because JavaScript does not have that built in because JSON is not really an iterable thing um, unless you're treating it as such. Uh, and then fetch, which we may or may not end up using. I'm still not positive on that. Uh, what fetch is, is it's a basically a wrapped API around an XML HTTP request that I believe only works from the server side or maybe it's only from client side node which is a weird thing to say because Node is sort of server-side JavaScript, but there's server-side and client-side Node anyway if you're writing a web app that's built on Express. It's complicated, but I'll do my best to explain and simplify things as we go through here. Um, so that's the setup of the project. Um, we wrote, uh, so the, the general structure of things, we can ignore these, that's just settings. Um, package lock and package and yarn lock, these are all management of the 
dependencies we have in the project. Uh, ESLintRC is just settings for the ESLint or for linting, um, which is more about catching dumb errors and common errors. And index.js is the file that runs by default. Inside of index.js, we import a helper function to get locale from latitude and longitude. Um, locale is what we use or what I've used for the purposes of this project to call the nearest market to your current location. Um, at Gymnasium, uh, the, the sort of parent company that we, we are, we are um, within uh, has certain job markets that we are serving job ads for, uh, job listings for. So um, a better name for this might be Git Market from Latitude and Longitude, which I can always change. Actually, I think I'll do that right now. Git Market from Lat Long. I believe that'll only change it here, but um, this helper function is used based on an input config to load jobs from this load jobs function. Um, and that config looks at the market that's put in to uh, specify, or basically to, to, excuse me. Let me read through this again. Determine the location for which we are returning job listings. If no market is provided and no latitude and longitude is provided, we'll return listings for all markets. So what this function is doing is, it's looking at a config that looks a lot like this. Uh, we're checking to see if there's a market ID provided in the config, which means we've already run this git market from latitude and longitude. Uh, if that's the case, then we use this target market, which is one that's input and specified. Uh, otherwise, we grab a market from latitude and longitude, which is what we were testing at the end of last week. Uh, we then, uh, so far, all I've done is return to the target market. So the next thing to do to plug in is now we know we have a good market in step two here. We'll fire off an API call uh, for jobs of the supplied minor segment. Minor segment is a bit of our lingo once again, which is what we use to specify the type of job listings that we'll return. So minor segment might represent something like a user experience designer or a copywriter or a uh, tester, illustrator, project manager, etc. Hopefully y'all are still with me. Um, so this is where we'll use something like fetch. Um, and then once we have that, we'll wait for that call to come back and return a JSON object with job listings um, rather than the target market here. So we can start by doing, I'm just gonna specify an empty uh, listings object. And instead of returning the market, we're gonna return listings because we know we'll be doing that eventually. So inside of this util function, now that we have a this distance between points, which we uh, use get locale from latitude and longitude, we, uh, we're going to change the name of this, get market. I'm not entirely sure if we return an ID or if we return the whole thing. That's a good question. So I might return the whole thing, actually. And that's okay. I just need to update my comment here. Market object representing the... All right. So the next thing is to write a function that does this step, which is we're gonna we'll, we'll write a function that's called fetch jobs for market market const jobs equals go and then we'll say return jobs here and basically. That should do all of the things. I just need to now write this function. Okay. We're going to... I can't decide whether to put this in the util bit or not, but I think I'm gonna.
Oops, let's stay alphabetical here. Just do some housekeeping. Ah, okay, prettier prefers it that way. Fine. Uh, that's great. What's the problem? Unexpected token module. Eh? So, given an input market, we want to return jobs from that market. We might end up restructuring where these function calls go, because this isn't really a utility function, this is more of a, the function that does the magic. <laughs> okay, uh, that's totally fine though. Okay, so where to start with this? Um, if uh, market return null. We got nothing if there's no market. Uh, and then otherwise, I'm going to say jobs. Just do that. So that this stops yelling at me for a second. We're going to need to move an API call into here. So I've got to grab all of that. I'll also need to format it. I need to check this market against the list of markets, so. Uh, and actually I'm gonna put another um, optional argument here called minor segments. Um, where we will pass these minor segments into the API call we're making to um, pull jobs for that those minor segments. If there are none provided, then we'll go get all of them. Um, and that's what this is doing, is it's saying, if this isn't provided, just use an empty array. Okay, so... some code that we had run last week just to refresh myself about what actually comes back when we um, when we run this get market from latitude and longitude uh, so I'm going to go to my console here actually I'm just gonna use my debugger and this should return something like Charlotte, although I don't particularly remember. Okay, it's an object, it's the full market. That's great. Name, ID, and coordinates, that's good enough. So, we're just gonna say target market.id. Uh, yeah, that's fine. And then in here, we're gonna call this market ID. I think what I want to do right now so these markets are currently just an array and the only way to check if the market that we're being supplied is in this array is to iterate over the whole thing if I turn this into an object I can still use lodash to iterate over it but then I could do something like this So now it's an object, and I could say 23 is Atlanta, and 60 is Austin, and 46 is Baltimore, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think that's what I'm going to do, and I believe this will still run. This is just going to take me a minute to do. So 10 is Boston. Um, I really don't mind the, that I have a duplicate field in there, um, because this isn't something that will need to be updated much 
if at all, ever, often. Um, just have to make sure I do this correctly. 24. 826. Very interesting how these IDs come about. I got up to 800 and started at 60. I think Boston was 60. Maybe I'm wrong. Miami is 33, Minneapolis is 20, Moline is 807, Moline, 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 Jolene, New Jersey is 30. I believe this will all still work. I may be proven wrong in a minute, but thank god we have undo if this breaks things. So I'm basically setting up a little bitty database in memory here, is what this amounts to. Where the primary key is this ID, and the table row, if you will, or the relation list row. So what's going on here? What doesn't it like? Poor man's database. But for a relatively small data set, this won't plug up RAM or anything like that. It won't take a lot of memory. And I don't mind keeping this in JavaScript and not using something like Redis or what have you. Sometimes you are better off not overcomplicating what you're building. Melbourne, Sydney, in Fukuoka, almost there. These are in in order, believe it or not. Um, but I don't don't think that bears much uh, impact on what's actually going on here. Okay, so now these are all in a JSON object called markets, and this for each will still work on it because it's a lodash function. Yeah. Okay, so I can say if markets market ID. Sorry, if not that, then return null. So what this is saying is go into this markets object look for something at the index marked by the ID passed into this function. If there's nothing there, then return null. Uh, and actually, yeah, no, that's good enough, because all we need is the market ID to, uh, to perform this. We don't need the whole market thing. I, I, I'm still cool with that. OK. So let's come back into this index. And we're going to put a debugger line here. And we'll step through and see where we've gotten. Hey, looks like someone said something in the chat. Hey there, uh, Nedlick. Uh, hope you're finding this interesting. Let me know if you have any questions as I go through here. OK, let's jump into this. So a market ID was provided of 61. That's good, so it should not return yet. Now we're checking this to see if it has an index of 61, which it should. And so if we skip that, it also did not return. And now we return an empty thing of jobs because we're not actually going out to a database yet or to an API call yet. So far, so good. OK. Lovely. Let's save this, come back into here. So now is when I need to pull over um, the API for the job. 
So I'm going to create a, another file in here called api.js. Maybe I'll call this job API just to be safe. Not that it'll ever expand really much beyond that. I'm going to, oh boy. Um, in here, I have the code for that. API call, there's a lot in here, boy. Give me a moment while I find this. This gets pretty hairy. Okay, so I'm gonna copy over this load jobs for market and this callback, and I believe that's all we need. So these are um, being copied from the gymnasium repo that is public right now. You can go look at them if you want. Um, they might not make much sense, and I believe they, the uh, API calls are um, locked to calls coming from a certain domain. So I'm not entirely sure you'll be able to execute calls against it, but uh, rest assured that all it is is an API that returns JSON objects representing job listings uh, for Gymnasium. Okay. There's already lots of good logic in here because I um, use some of this stuff on the site right now and we're, what we're doing is we're kind of just refactoring it into a more useful format. So we know, for example, that we don't need this whole markets thing which makes this file very big. That can go away. Oh dear. Okay. Let me do this the uh, ye olde fashioned way. It's going to take a minute. Hold up, I'll do it with my, the old scroll. Okay, adios markets. Oh boy, there's so much formatting going on in here. What, no, uh, if I hit save, does it do anything? No, this is gonna be bad for a minute. Okay, uh, <laughs> Prettier is really making this hard to look through. Uh, let's. So there are a couple of sub functions in here. Distance between points. Query jobs for market. I believe. Oh boy. I believe this is all I really need. Wow! 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 Okay. This is where the magic happens. I'm gonna cut that out, and we might use that callback, so I'm just gonna delete all of this. And hopefully my computer will stop trying to boil itself. It's already getting better. Okay. Temporarily, I'm going to export this callback so it stops complaining about that. We're going to worry about all this formatting nonsense in a second here. Don't need these. Ah, okay, this is assembling some. Yeah, yeah, we might not even use this function at all. All right. 
That's going to be what that gets turned into. You know what? I'm going to take that no console rule and just put it in here. Rules. There. Now we shouldn't have any, any more complaints about no console. Uh, and there's probably a disable for that in here somewhere. Yeah, who knows. Okay. Let's make this a little better. Now I'm literally just doing things to get uh, all these syntax highlighters to calm down. Fetch has the same API as um, jQuery, but we can we can work with this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a mess. Okay. Market ID. No, please. It's gonna take some uh, how you say finesse. All right. Mm -hmm. It looks like Prettier might have put this in here. Uh, okay. Let's see. Did it? Let's look for this string. Oh yeah, it made it prettier. <laughs> uh, what did it do? All right, we're gonna we're gonna undo this. Big long string is just the query string. And we're going to unite it all. Um, and what's funny is I don't remember what this querying language is called, but it's an API based querying language. Maybe OData? Maybe that's what it's called? Um, ID colon market order by equal job yeah okay 
So it's an OData call to a very long URL, um, which I surmise is just sort of how these things go. There might actually be an NPM package that makes all this stuff better, but we're gonna have to figure out how to make this API call with fetch and JSONP and have it come back from the API without blowing up node. All right, next step. Oops, next step. Let's go to NPM and we're gonna find the fetch package and we're going to look at Oh, interesting. Oh, what's going on here? This is not the right package. Lightweight module that brings window.fetch to node.js. Might be this, it might be that. Hey, look at that. Plenty of downloads. This might be the one we want. Fetch URL content so, uh, supports gzipped content for quicker download, redirects, uh, no eternal redirect loop, streaming, piping, great. See examples folder for a concrete example. Let's take a look. Okay, so inside of this repo, there's this nice examples folder. So I need to make sure I've installed the right package. I believe I have, though. Let's come to package, look for fetch. 110 matches what was on NPM, I believe. Fetch 110. Sweet. Although these all say 200. Maybe there's a tag we can keep an eye on here. Okay, so inside of this job API, we're going to have fetch.fetch URL. And in there, first thing we pass is the API URL. Lovely. And then options. These may or may not end up being the right options. They probably will not be the right options. That is okay. Oof, okay. You do you. So let's look at the options we're allowed. So method defaults to get, but we want to use post. So inside of this options thing, we're going to say method is post. Um, <laughs> I didn't notice that pretty was converting everything to double ticks. Whatever, that'll work. I've gotten used to single ticks out of personal preference is all. Okay, so let's see what else is being passed in here. Content type. Max response length, payload, gzip, cookies, cookie jar, output encoding, disable decoding, override care set, async DNS lookup, timeout, timeout, agent HTTPS, agent HTTP, agent reject unauthorized. Uh-huh. So far, these are not here. Let's see. Oops. There's no issues tracking in here. <laughs> uh -huh. Usually when I need to do something, uh, when there's something I don't know how to do, I would go to the issues tab on GitHub and search for uh, keywords that I'm interested in, but no such luck here. Okay, well, you know what, we can, we can just try and run this and see where we get. Um, 
There's a callback. Let's look at what these callbacks look like. Let's go to the example folder. Fetch URL. Error meta body. Okay, pretty simple callback. So rude of Prettier to get rid of those debug statements. I don't like that. Okay, I don't actually think I'm calling this yet. So we need to import that. getting a little confusing with the function names here. Load jobs for market is not defined. That's because I can't spell. Set some reasonable, sensible defaults here. We'll limit to 20 from page zero initially. I think those are both put in here. Yes, 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 okay. And now we should test the thing. So if I put a debugger line here and run this thing, fetch jobs for market, target market dot ID 61 that's Charlotte where I am if no market ID we got one of those now we can go into this build an API URL it's long but has all the things in all the places now is where it gets interesting so let's see if we get into this callback at all if error no error Okay, what does the meta say? Redirect count zero, response, status 400. Didn't work. I think this is going to be a little annoying to do. Wait, is it? <laughs> Those are just characters, I think they are. <laughs> Okay. Uh -huh. And then that's it. That did not work. Take out some of the debugger lines in here. At least now we know we're getting into this function call correctly. All that is hunky dory. No. What's wrong?
Okay, let's look at docs for fetch again. you know what we can have some fun here okay I'm gonna restart this thing let's grab this URL let's see what happens when I do this Those are the responses I'm looking for. Maybe I just need to read this stream that comes back from this. So let's 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 look at the other example here. Learn how to fetch a stream. This is not what I want. Um, what does this do? Hmm. Type two file. Uh, okay. Still not quite what I want. Nope, 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 nope. Give me this. Ah, body dot two string. Eh, no, that. Well, maybe. This is fetch URL. Okay, let's one more time run it and then, then we'll start to get creative. Ah, oh, look at that. Hold up. Something just got really funny in here, but. That's an error. Okay. Bad request. Maybe it's because I set this as a post. Two hundred. Hey, look at that. Come on. It's almost too easy sometimes. It's not true. I, I, I'm not sure why it was set to post if we needed get. But I'm into that. So let's put a... Ooh. Ooh. Jams. Okay, uh, let's get into this response. Let's see what's actually in body now. Hmm. Oh, this is interesting. So, I think I can do that. Hmm.
let's try this. We really don't need that. You're all no mo. Ooh. Some people. It's very strange the way this works. I forget why exactly Jason P works the way it does, but it is a strange thing to understand. Aha! But it don't matter. We wanted this as Jason, we get it as Jason. Now we have some job requests coming back. That's cool. Okay, what what did I just do? Um, I took the bits coming out from the body, I converted them to a string using UTF-8 parsing, which turns it into a big long string that looks like that. We then pass that into json.parse, because we know that this is a big, shoot, we know it's a json object. That converts it into a one nice object with contentlets, which is a list of five jobs in this case. And now we have jobs coming back. Cool. Why is that so different? I'm, I'm really not sure why it's so different from the uh, implementation we have in jQuery on the site, but this is nice and clean and I can work with it. Now the trick is, and the trick perpetually is, getting asynchronous things to work the way you want them to with Node. So we're going to have this thing return new promise, and this is going to have a resolve, reject, the hope is we can execute all of this lovely code here. Asynchronously. I think that'll do it. strange out here man so I forget how to mark these as async Some really fun music. Uh... Hmm. Another thing I wanted to do is say that.
think this will get it back into here. Not entirely sure. Cool. That worked. Hmm. Okay. I think I can do this. Can not use keyword await outside an async function. Did that do it? Yes. Okay, okay. Don't need this any longer. Muzzle. Cool. What did I just do? I have no idea. So this requires uh, node v8, which is a relatively recent release of node. So this won't run in all environments. Um, this particular environments that are running node of a version that's maybe more than a year old ish give or take but what I did is let's let's describe all of that so this job API function um, I returned a promise a promise basically says that we're doing an asynchronous thing when that asynchronous thing comes back I'm either going to call this resolve function or this reject function which tells whether or not the execution of this um, asynchronous action worked so I do this whole thing, I attempt to fetch from this URL. If for some reason that URL comes back with an error, I reject and give the reason being the error here. Um, otherwise, I resolve with the uh, JSON that came back and I just grabbed contentlets out of it because that's where they are stored inside of the response from this particular API call. So this job API is called from this fetch jobs for market uh, function, which is now marked as asynchronous because we don't know when it's gonna come back. So this is something that tells the um, the, the lexer that runs this that, um, or I guess that the, the uh, call stack that runs this, that this function does, should not lock the UI uh, or lock the process thread. Um, it says asynchronously run this function and uh, we know it's an async function because at some point in the function there's this await which executes something that returns a promise and the promise is the thing that we had just written it awaits for that promise to come back if the promise come back su comes back successfully uh, it puts the contents of that promise into this jobs variable uh, and then we return that um, if we wanted to um, if yeah I guess if we wanted to we could surround this with try and catch uh, and this catch would take the uh, I believe this catch would catch the exception from this await bit <laughs> no give me my rainforest sounds I'm a peaceful man. All right, I think that would work. The catch is that this doesn't work because this is just declared within a scope. Let's actually, let's look that up. Um, so node async catch. Yeah, cool. Nope, that's exactly right. So that's how it would work. Wait, maybe not. Oh yeah, okay. Well, call me crazy. This would also work. Best luck with SoundCloud today. Let's see, what about when I change up my tunes here? That 
it seems to be a podcast in Dutch, maybe. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, maybe I'll go without music for a bit. I don't want to waste too much time doing that. Okay. I think I, I think that was a reasonably good explanation of what's going on here. Um, I hope I hope y'all all understand that. Um, I'm going to simplify this code here. Uh, actually, no, I won't. This this is more bulletproof, and that's how it should be. Um, yeah, and if I wanted to, I guess I could just say return that. should be console.error. Then we don't need this. So this ends up being a relatively simple um, execution. And so now, now the catch is, <laughs> uh, I have this working so that if I feed in a market with coordinates or an ID, this should work. Um, the other things I need to start configuring, uh, I should I should remove this because that's not something that I'm supporting. Um, these I need to, to add in at some point, the minor segment page and the page size, which will uh, effectively be passed through as um, parameters to that API call. Um, I also need to mount this up to a, an express server somewhere so that this function can be executed. Um, through a through a, a web interface, um, and then that will live on a um, like we were talking about last week, Heroku and or uh, AWS Lambda somewhere, and this little baby microservice to pull jobs from that API will be a simply consumable URL for us that will feed back uh, a JSON list of nice jobs um, that we can put into. Uh, our site. Now if I want to get more clever about it, do I want to? Maybe I do. If I want to get more clever about it, what I could do is have this um, pair up with React DOM server and instead of returning a JSON list of jobs, I could return pre-formatted uh, HTML entities that represent those jobs that could be formatted on the server side and updated as a part of this microservice rather than as a part of our theme or platform. The benefit of that is that it's a little easier to update an itty bitty microservice than it is to update the whole platform. The, I do want to be more clever. Uh, yeah, the encouragement is always, always appreciated. Um, yeah, upsides are it's easier to maintain. Downsides are, well, are there downsides? I, I mean, apart from it being a, a fragmentation of our theme, that's definitely one. Um, shoot, I don't know. I guess I can see if I can do that. Let's see what we can do. Okay, this is where I'm gonna have to look up a little bit of documentation. Yeah, I'm gonna look up uh, Express. We'll set up a super simple Express app. Um, boy, you know what I should do before I do that is commit this all as working code to something. Yes, I'm, I'm definitely gonna do that. Um, Oh, but this is so simple. I can do this. <laughs> ah, shit. Okay. Give me a minute. Um, time to create a new repo. Jobs. Microservice. Let's call it that. 
I don't think I already created a repo for this. Um, node microservice to fetch and return jobs for gymnasium. Doesn't need to read me. That should be good. Okay, let me set all this up. While I'm at it, I should rename some folders and things in here. How can I do that without breaking everything? Uh, actually, no. I think I think that's just fine. So, um, can I do it here? From the command line, we're going to do a git. Okay. Git init. We're going to do git remote add origin and then that. Ah, git remote add origin. Do a too many active changes. Great. Um, we'll say initial commit. Oh wait, 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 wait. Very important. This is one of my favorite tools on the web. Gitignore.io um, generates useful Gitignores for you based on known things. So here I'm going to say node. I'm going to say code, which is the code editor I'm using. I'm going to say Mac OS. I'm going to say React. Nope. Um, that might be all I need. E JavaScript. No, yeah, okay, we're good. That'll do. So I'm going to create this. I'm going to add a git ignore file. So it just created me this nice git ignore file. So in here and here, git ignore. Save that. I'll come here. Uh, and I'm going to have to do this from somewhere else. So git steps. Git add dot git ignore. These I never really know what to do with. Um, there are apparently, I mean, there are definitely several schools of thought on this. Uh, so let's generate this git ignore again. Code, no. Node, code. Uh, Mac OS, yarn, npm. No. Okay. Typically, only one of these should be committed. I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to eliminate package lock. Yeah, okay. So I'll put it at the top. Oops, I want terminal. Lovely. So now if I come back here, great. This is somewhere where uh, now I can break things and 
not fear repercussion. Okay, so we've now created a repo we can use. Let's start wrapping this thing in Express. So, in my console here, oh look, there's updates. What? How? What is happening? I don't typically use this uh, interface. Yeah, okay. Oh no. Oh no. All right. Now let's wrap this thing in Express. So, we'll close that. We're going to do yarn. Ugh. Rather than this, we're going to do this. Put these up at the top. That will do what I want. So now when I run this, we create a cheeky little express server that should only ever serve up a JSON file of jobs. Maybe. Let's try. Let's find out. What's happening? Is it happening? Did I do the thing? Let's see. Well, <laughs> that's not nothing. Some, I mean, I, I can show you that this is working. Yeah. Um, let's do a couple of different things here. So, I'm going to put this outside of here. I think that will help some of this at least from, from the onset. Still got a console log in there somewhere. That did not help, incidentally. Okay, so we have a Express server stood up. need to put this whole thing inside of there. But before I do that, let's take a look at this. Fetch jobs for market return await. So this should be asynchronous. Oh, it's asynchronous. I see, I see, I see.
don't know if this will work, to be honest. Uh, restart my dev server here. Cool, okay. You know, it's almost like I know what I'm doing sometimes. So now we're just spitting out the array. You can see it's an array of job listings to a response here. And I think I think now we can start getting a little clever with this. So Yeah, all right, let's try. We're gonna do run add react. Prop types. Oh, this is the debug console. We wanna do it here. And Might do. Okay. So this is going to be a listing of components. <laughs> it really wants to compact this. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so, what is the problem here? JSX not allowed in files with extension JS. Uh, I'm gonna nix that rule too because it doesn't bother me. And I copied it though. Please. React JSX file name extension. Ah. Okay. That should shut that up. <laughs> it is hello, comma world. Totally right.
All right. Prop type job is not required, but it has no corresponding default prop declaration. Yeah. This is a very simple thing that if it renders will just return a hello world regardless of what job is passed into it. Um, we now need Do a web search. React render to string. React DOM server, that's what we want. Okay. This is getting a little heady. I will explain what is happening uh, uh, in a second. Yarn add React DOM. sure how to do this. I think we might just need to say under two string and then Job listing. And if I did that, this should spit out some HTML that's hello worldy. That's, of course, what one must do naturally is rerun the dang thing. Oh, wait, I'm refreshing the wrong page, aren't I? Okay. This should be down. Good. Let's run the thing. Syntax error. Unexpected token. The, um, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. We're going to get rid of this, this file. And we're going to say, That's good enough. Yeah, okay. Try it again. Unexpected token thing. Oh, I see. It doesn't like this here. I've missed a step somewhere. The 
problem is still that it cannot parse that. Hmm. We'll, we'll try one more time. I don't think that fixed it. Yeah, it doesn't like that function. <laughs> Thank you, Brittier. Uh, because this needs to be transpiled from uh, JSX to right. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Specifying children. Gonna have to be some transpiling that happens. I see. Okay, I can explain this. Oh, this is fairly old. No, actually, not too old. by the package file. Boom. So what I just did is included where to go in my dev dependencies. Uh, this. No, I need to add Babel to begin with, though. Right, 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 right. You're, uh, So we're adding a transpiler to compile that JSX code into working JavaScript. Uh, we're then going to run a project, uh, a process that uh, monitors this express.js, which will be index.js, and executes this node transpiler on that file to. To convert basically this into working JavaScript code, because you can't, that's not good JavaScript, that's not real JavaScript, it's JSX, which is why I got that warning that I was uh, so happily, happy to ignore before. That, of course, did not fix it. <laughs> uh huh. This is why there are quick starter things for. React, but sometimes it's nice to do it yourself. Oh, I see. Uh, I think now the problem is that, yeah, my launch.json is not running yarn, so it's not actually running that. Okay, cool. So what we've done here. Now I'm running this script, which actually does the transpiling stuff. Um, I don't actually have anything written that lets me know when the server is up and running, which is kind of funny. But now we've got this, which is working-er-ish. Except there's nothing in there. But, back up and running, it did not complain. 
And then we just need to play around with this. Not exactly working as I expect it to. <coughs> and I can show you this is still working by hello world here. <coughs> also do that. I actually don't know if this will render a JSON thing to a string nicely. Sort of expect that to break. Yes, unhandled promise rejection. Objects are not valid as a React child. That's sensible. So I'm going to change this back to job listing. And we're going to set a debugger in here. Oh man, which prettier is going to nuke? That's annoying. the old method for a minute here. So what's happening every time I save a file here is that node monitor, node mon will take a look at the files inside of my um, directory here and it restarts itself when there's a change. But this is not happening. That's funny. Source components job listing. Is that right? Index source components job listing. Yes. Oh, I bet it's this. Because it's the only D, only export. Well, now I'm beginning to confuse myself just a touch. But what I'm expecting to see is that this React DOM server renders this component to a string, which should be this guy, which is the default export from here, the only export from here. And I think that if I get rid of this, it will just say something like function and some messy nonsense. That's okay. Oh, well, downloaded a file called download that was empty. Even better. Okay. <sighs> uh, maybe I need to initialize it. Maybe I need to do it. Let's try that. Unexpected token. <laughs> okay. Let's see where we get. That doesn't seem good. Cannot read property type job of undefined. Okay. this out a little bit. I'm sure prettier is 
just going to have other ideas about that. Okay. How do we do? Aha. Uh -huh. What had happened was, I think we just spat out this. Boy, that's cool. Okay. So, so, what does this mean? So far, I've shown nothing of value. Um, what it means is that inside of this endpoint, I can. can create an array so I can say dot for each jobs job such that uh, no actually I want to do a map so mm -mm -mm -mm. say render to string here and I can say job listings and in theory that should print out a bunch of five things five hello worlds now we're getting somewhere that's scary okay so let's take a look at what's coming back from this we're gonna say uh, there's a description. Ooh, 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 let's get even fancier. No, let's not do that. Title, title. So we're just going to say in here. Ready? This is going to freak you out. Job dot title. Wait for it to reboot, hit refresh. Stop. That's so cool. Okay. <laughs> That's really cool. I'm excited about that. Um, I am over time uh, for the stream, but that's so cool. I'm really excited about this. Now we can have an endpoint that generates markup that spits out job listings that we can consume on our site and do what we want with them. Uh, and we could even include styles in this. Um, anyway, I'm going to call it a day. Um, thank you for hanging out on the stream. I'm going to save more of this for next week so we can pick up where we left off. Uh, and we can have things like uh, a job title with a description below it. Like this. HTML formatted. All right. Till next week, we'll catch you then. Take care, guys.